And, and I'll tell you, Chuck, I want to, I believe it was just in the last week that we got more countries signing on to sort of a, a, a global flat tax of some, uh, at least a baseline agreement. And what I was thinking about is here we're trying, you have the Treasury Secretary trying to get uh, other countries to, to sort of yeah. not become a tax giveaway, and here we are in the United States. Give us a history lesson here. How did South Dakota become essentially the world's, uh, one of the world's uh, great tax havens? Well, South Dakota's secret sauce is that they don't uh, disclose who the beneficiaries are of the trust, they are, their secrecy. Secondly, they don't charge any taxes, income tax or, or taxes on the trust assets. And their third important ingredient is you can have a perpetual trust in South Dakota. So starting in 1983, the trust industry went to the state and they changed the laws to eliminate uh, a provision of property law that basically says a trust has to wind down within a generation or two. And so those three components basically make South Dakota a real destination, an attraction for what we call dynasty trusts, people who want to park and sequester billions of dollars forever. I, what I can't figure out here is what benefit an average resident of South Dakota gets from this. Probably not much of a benefit at all. I mean, in a small state, there are probably 500 people uh, who work in the trust industry, so those are pretty good paying jobs. I assume those people pay some income tax. But otherwise, there's not a lot of benefit to the people of South Dakota. And in some ways, there's a vulnerability that they're exposing themselves now to criminal wealth from around the world because they have right. become essentially accomplices to that wealth heist, if you will.